what we're doing in the lab is not so much focusing on the stem cells themselves, but focusing on what we call the niche, the stem cell niche, which are the, the cells that will support uh, the stem cells and uh, give them the signaling that allows them to stay stem cell and not differentiate and also expand when required. One very good example is in the adult body, the hematopoietic stem cell system. When your resident hematopoietic stem cell are in the bone marrow close to what we call an endothelial niche, so in close contact with the endothelium, they will uh, stay a stem cell and whenever they and expand as much as required to respond to stress that your body has or to cytotoxic drug or to any disease that might need a, uh, an increase in the stem cell compartment or, or in the differentiated progeny of hematopoietic stem cells. So it's a collaboration with Dr. Shaheen Rafi, who's my uh, uh, colleague at Wild Corner Medical College in New York, and who's a, who's a very senior HHMI uh, scientist, and who was, uh, who's, who's behind all this concept of endothelium-based regeneration. Um, and uh, the goal is, so we now have evidence in, vi in vitro and in some in vivo models, uh, so mice genetic models or mice models, that we can use the endothelium to regenerate an organ. Uh, so he had, he had published uh, evidences in, uh, in liver and lung uh, and, and, um, and hematopoietic stem cell. We have, uh, through our collaborative work, worked on the cardiomyocyte expansion and hematopoietic stem cell in Doha. And the goal is now to bring that to a patient. So fo focusing on, on, on a disease which is like the ischemic uh, diabetic patients, being able to go today from um, having no real solution for these patients with uh, peripheral uh, vascular disease to uh, injecting them the appropriate endothelium. So the, the scope of the research is going to be to determine what is the appropriate endothelium, how the endothelium gets injured during uh, development of a chronic ischemic disease, and uh, to be able to generate uh, what we call a GMP, so it's an, a cell line that we can be able to transplant to patient, a GMP endothelium that we can transplant and then we can control in terms of uh, maintaining their regenerative potential as well as avoiding fibrosis or um, avoiding uh, any side effects, you know, like maintaining this uh, capacity of regenerating their local tissues. There's a high, high prevalence of uh, diabetes and cardiovascular disease in Qatar. Uh, it, it, I would, I, it's hard to say if it's more in the Catholic population, but the Catholic population are very prone to diabetes. 20% of them uh, might have some kind of diabetes type 2 or 1. And, and so the goal is to be able to give a therapeutic solution for patients that are usually um, have kind of a uh, end stage disease where amputation is the only solution. So if we could regenerate locally the trophicity of the tissue, we can avoid uh, all the complications going with that. Yeah, and we, we had a, a two major grants, NPRP, uh, addressing these uh, issues of uh, uh, using endothelium. So the first one was uh, the, the one that we had with Shaheen, uh, showing that how endothelium can actually give rise itself to hematopoietic stem cell through uh, uh, different progenitors, I mean different hem hemangioblast progenitors. And then we have a paper which is under review now uh, and close to acceptance where we show that uh, compared to bone, uh, stromal cells, uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, the endothelium uh, really specifically expands the true hematopoietic uh, stem cells and doesn't induce as much differentiation as the other cells. So that has very relevant to uh, clinical applications such as bone marrow transplantation. Uh, we got another grant uh, uh, focusing on the same idea of the using the niche uh, to expand uh, cardiomyocyte to, to, so that the project looks at how we can use uh, specific endothelium and understand the signaling that helps uh, to expand um, cardiomyocyte progenitors mm -hmm. derived from human embryonic stem cells. Uh, that's a project in collaboration with Ed Stanley in Australia, which is also going very well. I think it's great that Cara Foundation and QNRF has uh, is taking the risk uh, of funding these very innovative grants uh, because you know a, lo a lot of the uh, research community now is working on the stem cells themselves and their potential applications. The Nobel Prize went to IPS 
uh, last year in medicine uh, showing that there's a huge interest in stem cell and, and here we have a new paradigm which is instead of transplanting the stem cells themselves or the organ specific stem cell we can transplant and restore the niche that has been uh, injured and, and for QNRF to take such risk uh, would um, lead to a, a really a shift of paradigm that um, you don't really need to transplant the organ. If you just restore the normal uh, environment, then the resident stem cell will, will do their work and expand. And um, that will kind of put Qatar on a map of uh, regenerative medicine. As it's way broader than just the stem cell themselves, by showing that we are able to have very innovative approaches in Doha compared to th that really compete with the best institute in the world.